To be honest, I don't like changing my opinion on media, but especially if it's something that I'm very hard on and have made myself known for it. I will kill myself if I end up liking a Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. <laughs> Psych! You thought I would come out of a fucking Tom Holland movie liking it? That's <laughs> so fucking... Who the fuck are you? You fucking bitch. As I was saying, what, what, uh, oh yeah, uh, that would be so fucking half correct. Um, this movie's fucking weird. So I just watched Spider-Man No Way Home, the third movie in this MCU Spider-Man trilogy and the follow-up to the abysmal Far From Home, which was a movie I despised. Going into this movie, hearing about some of the leaks, I was very intrigued and at the same time very annoyed with this movie, so basis to say, I already had mixed feelings before even watching it. Now before I start giving my thoughts, I should probably just give some pretty basic likes and dislikes without spoiling anything, just in case you haven't already watched the movie, and then uh, we'll move into everything else. That seemed fine? Alright. So, I guess when it comes to likes, I liked some of the characters in here. I liked how the movie seemed to take some of the criticism from Homecoming and Far From Home and apply it in here, and their response comes out pretty well for the most part. I liked some of the humor. There were a couple scenes that got a good laugh out of me. There were a couple really big scenes in the movie that I actually enjoyed a lot. Maybe not for the same reason as everyone else, but that'll be getting into spoiler territory. And uh, speaking of spoiler territory, I think that's all I can say without spoiling everything. Uh, so one of the dislikes, I... Um, Fuck, how can I phrase this? Uh, there are some writing choices when it comes to the dialogue that feels very disrespectful to some certain things, and I was not much of a fan of it. Uh, there is one criticism that I've had with a lot of the previous movies that they continue going down the path of, was not a fan of that. There was uh, a couple things prior to the third act that I absolutely fucking despised that I guess they come up with an excuse in the third act for, but it overall gives me very mixed feelings. Um... Yeah, once again, I think that's all I can say for now, so without further ado, let's get into spoiling. Three... Two... One... Holy fuck! So Spider-Man No Way Home follows up immediately after Far From Home with everyone in New York knowing about Spider-Man's identity, and it causes pain and suffering for Peter, Aunt May, Happy, MJ, and Ned. So Peter's response to it is to ask Doctor Strange to come up with a solution, which ends up being to fuck with the universe and make everyone not remember who Peter is. But in result to Peter constantly trying to change the spell, so it'll include May, Happy, MJ, and Ned, everybody in different universes who knows about Peter's identity is now in the MCU universe, which includes Doc Ock, Green Goblin, and Sandman from the Rain trilogy, and the Lizard and Electro from the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Now here's where I started getting pissed off. Because in Far From Home, when they brought in J.K. Simmons to do J. Joma Jameson, unlike everybody else, I did not find this cool. I was annoyed by this, because all it told me was that they were fishing for nostalgia from the Raimi fans who didn't like Homecoming, and I wasn't about to take the bait. So when I heard all about these different characters from the previous Spider-Man movies appearing in here, that just further proved my point, and when it came to Doc Ock specifically, I really wanted to know what the fuck they were gonna do, because at the end of Spider-Man 2, Doc Ock becomes a good guy again. That is the entire point of his character in that movie, and when Alfred Molina slipped up and told the world that he was gonna be playing a villain, that pissed me the fuck off. And it pissed me the fuck off even more watching this movie, and watching him being a villain and talking about how he had Spider-Man in his arms, while simultaneously knowing that Spider-Man is Peter, while simultaneously his sun machine was broken, while simultaneously not knowing that he ends up dying, it made no fucking sense, fucked with the timeline of Spider-Man 2 and the entire point of his character arc in the movie, and it very much upset me. And that goes for everyone in this entire movie. The whole thing plays out with these past villains being ripped out of their timeline and put in the MCU, but midway through the movies they were originally in, which makes absolutely no fucking sense timeline-wise and gives me an anger-induced headache. And then what made it worse is Peter decides he doesn't want these people to go back into their universe just to ultimately die, even though I'm pretty sure the ending of Spider-Man 3 with Sandman's fate was open-ended, but fucking whatever, uh, which continued to make even less sense because if they all became good and lose their powers, then that completely rewrites five entire fucking movies! But then the ending happens, where 
Peter decides to ultimately let them go back to their universe and let their fate happen, which I guess is nice, but it ultimately left me feeling like, what was the fucking point? What was the point of this entire movie? This didn't really establish anything when it came to the MCU or Spider-Man's character. Um... I'm still not really sure how the universe is in the movies work now. I, I I guess they just never got ripped out of their movies. Is that what the spell also did? They just made it so they never got ripped out? I, I, I'm not really fucking sure. Uh, what I am sure is this still screams so much nostalgia bait to me. And I don't care. Yeah, that's right. A Tom Holland movie just completely filled itself with pointless nostalgia bait and it fucking won me over and it did that the very moment Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire showed up. This is so nostalgia baity. They, they, they could have easily made a third movie with all the criticism given to Homecoming and Far From Home in mind. Make a good Spider-Man movie without having to shove old characters that I like into my face. But instead they didn't. They just said fuck it and threw me these characters and I just said fuck it and threw myself into them. I loved seeing Toby and Andrew in the same scene. I loved seeing Tom get added and then and them just all sitting around having fun banter about Toby's lack of fucking web shooters or talking about what's happened in their past universes. Though I will say, uh, Andrew says that Uncle Ben told him that great power comes with great responsibility. And that is entirely false. His uncle said, you are a lot like your father. You really are, Peter, and that's a good thing. But your father, by philosophy and principle, really, he believed that if you could do good things for other people, you had a moral obligation to do those things. I really don't know how you could forget such a simple quote. But yeah, seeing the three live-action Spider-Man we have surprisingly felt really nice to watch. It felt really nice hearing Toby say that him and MJ worked out their relationship. It was cool seeing Andrew talking with Electro or Toby talking with Doc Ock and them both just kind of like getting along and understanding each other. It was all just so fucking nice. There was even one moment in the movie that sent chills through my body and that was when Andrew saved MJ the way he couldn't save Gwen and immediately started crying. And I just... Fuck, man, I really like that moment a lot. I'm a little disappointed that I didn't find myself enjoying much of Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin in this, given how he is my absolute favorite in the entire Raimi trilogy, but maybe on a second watch, knowing how the movie ends, it'll make it a bit better to sit through. I don't know, but there is a scene I want to talk about, because I actually really appreciate it, while at the same time kind of hating it, and that is Aunt May's death. I appreciate this scene, because they finally fucking gave Tom Spider-Man fucking consequences. The man got selfish, and it resulted in his mother figure dying, and I love that. But at the same time, you're basically just doing the bare fucking minimum when it comes to writing a fucking character. And also, why is Aunt May the one to give the fucking great power comes great responsibility quote? This is what I was talking about earlier. This fucking movie continues to just completely sideline Uncle Ben. He truly does not fucking exist in the MCU. And you know what? At least they left Tony out of the movie. I'm happy about that. But as we established before, Spectacular Spider-Man did such an amazing job with showing us how Uncle Ben is the reason why Peter is Spider-Man. You could have easily had a scene where Peter remembers this quote. Or if you so desperately need Aunt May in there, have her not say it, but instead reference it? Have her go, remember what Uncle Ben told you, and then Peter could respond with, with great power comes great responsibility. That would have at least fucking acknowledged his existence and his fucking purpose! But no, we gotta have Aunt May say the quote, because apparently Peter never fucking knew this. This is the first time he's ever heard the infamous fucking rule of being Spider-Man! And then he has the fucking audacity to tell Toby and Andrew that they have no idea what he's going through. They know more than you could ever Fucking good, you, you Tony Stark loving piece of shit! But nonetheless, despite my problems with this movie, I still found everything post Andrew and Toby's introduction to be, without a doubt, the best Tom Holland Spider Man movie. And it just overall becomes really wholesome and fun that. I can look past how this doesn't make Tom Spider-Man any better of a fucking Spider-Man. He's still a shit Spider-Man when it comes to writing. These movies are still bad Spider-Man movies, but in No Way Home's case, I don't really care all that much because it at least gave me some good in entertainment. 
And I guess when it comes to basing my opinions off of overall enjoyment, that's all I can really ask for. It's pretty obvious that eventually I'll do a video reviewing every single Spider-Man movie out there, which means I'll end up watching this for a second time, and, and maybe then I'll enjoy the movie a bit more given how I'll know the ending, because admittedly not knowing how they wrap everything up does lead me into being really fucking pissed off that you're shitting all over good movies and whatever Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 is. Scenes like Norman quoting the meme dialogue from the first movie or Peter making Doc Ock good again might not infuriate me the next time around, knowing that all of this is fucking pointless. Uh, which, which I guess would be my final verdict on the movie. It's fucking pointless. It doesn't give me a point as to why we needed to see characters from our childhood or why overall this movie's plot exists. The most I can say for a point is that it finally puts the man in Spider-Man when it comes to the MCU's character, but in the laziest fucking way possible. And I'm... Honestly, fine with that. I, I accept that the MCU completely disrespected the character and never let Tom have a proper portrayal of Spider-Man. And what I've heard, and given the post credit scene, uh, Tom might be moving on to the Sony universe, so hopefully then his Spider-Man will be given the movies and the proper writing it deserved. And I hope that because of this movie, we can finally see Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 4, and I'll even fucking take Mark Webb's Amazing Spider-Man 3, because why the fuck not? So, like I said, this movie's weird. It gives me weird feelings. I both love it and hate it. I, I think it is the movie embodiment of Yang and Yang, and I guess that's alright. You're probably expecting a score, but I just, I can't give you one. It, even, even to my standards, I have no idea where the fuck I would put this on my scaling system. I just, I enjoy the final act of this movie, and hopefully on a rewatch, I'll enjoy it entirely. Who knows? This was just... Probably the weirdest experience I've ever had with a movie. So I guess technically, in a way, I did like it. How do you half kill yourself? And of course, everyone has their own opinion. But my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already.